Alexander Zinchenko is becoming Mikel Arteta's quarterback. When the Ukrainian is firing, Arsenal play their best football. The big thing with Zinchenko, he plays this inverted role. He moves from the outside into a midfield area. The big thing with Arsenal in terms of their setup this season, we've seen a number of different shapes. With Partey inverting, with Zinchenko inverting, but also we've seen Ben White invert and Zinchenko on the other side creating a 2-3-5 structure. For me, this is the perfect perfect system and shape to beat the teams that are going to sit in deep compact blocks, giving Zinchenko the freedom to get on the ball and look for passes over the top. A big thing that Arsenal struggled with last season against teams that played in deep blocks like Everton was when they were working the ball out to the wide areas, teams would flood that zone with defensive players and as Bakayo Saka and Martinelli are the real progressors and creators in the Arsenal side. They look to dribble, look to take people on and get themselves into the penalty area. It kind of killed Arsenal's offensive game. They've evolved this season already and Zinchenko is a big part of why they're starting to really rock in these matches. Number one is a fantastic passer. He's got that ability to play long switches, clips over the top, uh, but those long passes have become a real weapon. When Arsenal do face these teams that sit in these compact blocks, one of the things that Arsenal need to do is stretch the defensive line. They want to pull the defensive line, not only to get their fast attackers in behind the defence for direct chance on goal, but also to open up space in between the lines for their number eights to really progress the play and create chances. I think one of the big things that they struggled with last season was not only breaking Everton down uh, at Goodison Park, but as well they didn't really interchange their positions in these wide areas. Something that we saw against Everton, which I think is great credit to Mikel Arteta, He's seen the problem and he's fixed it. But let's move back to Zinchenko's quarterback role. The big thing against Everton was him using his long passing to get Martinelli and Fabio Vieira in behind the defence. And there were some brilliant moments that we're going to take a look at. So we pick up this move with Arsenal in their build-up shape. We can clearly see the five attackers stretched across the final third. We can see Declan Rice in a defensive midfield area. Zinchenko left central midfield. And Ben White playing as a bit of a right central midfielder that will rotate and interchange positions based on the track angle ahead of him at the moment. Obviously, Saka's inside. Odegaard's holding the width. Arsenal's rotations were a lot better in the game against Everton. What this really means is it frees up space on the opposite flank. You draw the opponents on to one side of the pitch and then you hit them with a direct ball over the top to get behind the defence. So you can see there is space to attack in behind the Everton defence. They're defending in their defensive third in a mid-block. They're defending in their low block. They're defending in a low block in their defensive third. But Arsenal's rotation out wide. We're going to see Saka pull wide. Odegaard move inside as Ben White carries the ball. What I like about this versus the last game at Goodison Park is there's a lot more interchange. There's a lot more players underlapping, overlapping, combining. Here, simply Ben White moves the ball to Saka out wide. The pressure comes from Decore. We saw this frequently in the last game where the central midfield would move out and look to double or triple up on Saka to stop Arsenal's offensive play. Ben, ben White makes a good underlap. But what this has done, it's pulled Everton's team over to the right flank of Arsenal. Good use of possession, drops the ball inside to... Ben White, who combines with Saka with the 1-2. From this position, we can see five Everton players pulled to this side of the pitch, which opens up an area for Zinchenko to be on the ball in space. When we talk about that quarterback role, I'm thinking like David Beckham for England. I'm thinking Pirlo for AC Milan, a player that's going to get on the ball from deep and look to play spray passes over the top of the opposition's defence. We see that with Zinchenko. Not only that, but Arsenal have created a 4v3 by drawing Everton over to one flank and then switching the play to the other flank. What this means is that Arsenal have got a numerical superiority so they can look to either creating a passing overload or, in this instance, when Zinchenko gets his head up. When we're talking that quarterback pass, this is exactly what I mean. This is a way to get over a low block. There's loads of different ways Arsenal have done it previously, the combination play, the third man runs, but this is kind of just being a little bit more direct. Zinchenko playing a David beckham S pass over the top for Fabio Vieira. Now he's in behind. These situations were created time and time again for Arsenal. You know, moving the ball to the right, using Zinchenko to play direct, then Fabio Vieira, Martinelli or Trossard in behind the defence. From this situation, Fabio Vieira looks for the cutback for Eddie Nketiah, probably needs to look to drive the ball, you know, across the box, maybe Saka at the back post on his left foot. Uh, but 
This starts to open up Everton and this will open up low blocks that Arsenal have got to face this season. Not only did Zinchenko play these quarterback passes from the middle of the pitch, but he also dropped into the inside channels, getting into the half spaces to then find the balls over the top. The pick up the play with Gabriel in possession. He's going to carry forward, looking to coax Adrissa Garner Gay out of position. You can see Zinchenko's taken up a lovely little pocket of space. You know, he's in between the two midfielders, away from the defenders. There's no one that can really pick him up, which allows him to take that first touch. As we mentioned previously, Arsenal's shape slightly changed. It looks a little bit more 2-3-5 this season than the 3-2-5 that we saw over and over again last season. I think Arteta's trying to evolve. He's trying to make his team be a little bit more difficult to play against. It gives Arsenal Arsenal a great sort of range of formations and tactics. You know, you can go from this kind of 2-3 base we're talking about at the moment. We've also seen the back three base with, uh, you know, Ben White dropping a little bit deeper, getting on the ball in the slightly deeper area to create a different opportunity when there's another problem. You know, this system is probably going to be facing teams that play with two centre forwards, whereas when they're playing a, a deep 4-5-1, having that uh, fullback inverted a little higher opens up these types of opportunities. But back into the action, Gabriel's going to look for Zinchenko in that left central midfield position. It's very, very hard to get out and pick him up. But not only that, Zinchenko's got the quality on the ball in his first touch, but also the vision to find Fabio Vieira in behind the defence. I think one of the big reasons why Arsenal uh, beat Everton or when they were dominant at Goodison Park was runners in behind the defence with Zinchenko finding them. It came from a lot of different areas, but here's one with Fabio Vieira over the top and that low ball into the box again could find Saka at the back post. This time unfortunately Arsenal don't convert the chance but it all comes from Zinchenko's awareness to pick up that inside left channel. Good first touch, lovely clipped over the, over the top of the, the defence. Again who's picking up Fabio Vieira, he's making a run from deep Ashley Young's gone in on him, he's going to spin in behind, low cross into the box, great football. But if we take a look at Zinchenko's past map, we can clearly see the plan in possession. Zinchenko is operating as Arteta's quarterback. He's looking for balls over the top of the defence on the right wing and on the left wing. A real key reason why they beat Everton's low block and something that Arteta is going to use time and time again in the Premier League this season. Another thing I want to touch on in the Premier League review is Fabio Vieira in between the lines. He mentioned Zinchenko's quarterback role but Fabio Vieira I thought was absolutely fantastic it gives Arsenal great guile in the final third not only to look for underlaps off the ball as we've previously been seeing in certain clips but also that ability to thread the pass through one of the key things when playing Everton is you've got to look and stretch them behind the defense and it's something that Fabio Vieira did really well in a disallowed goal so we pick up the play just after an Arsenal attack Dwight McNeil in possession of the football looking to play down the line Arsenal's pressure is good there's not really any option for him to play out for so of course he looks to hit the channel William Saliba recovers and instantly is pressed by Beto plays it to Gabriel and Beto continues his press cutting out that passing lane back to William Saliba we can see at the moment that not only is Zinchenko being picked up Rice is being picked up and there isn't many passing options Gabriel gets a little lucky here the ball is uh, is cleared it deflects off Beto and drops to the feet of Eddie Nketiah and this is where Fabio Vieira really comes alive I don't think there's any other player in the Arsenal squad apart from Martin Odegaard that could play this pass that's got the vision to split the defence and at the moment Fabio Vieira is far more suited to Arsenal than Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz is more of that kind of give-and-go player. He'll receive to play feet, play a simple pass and then move forward. Whereas Fabio Vieira has a real vision about him and his pass to split Ashley Young and Tarkovsky to get Martinelli in behind is absolutely brilliant. And if Arsenal want to continue on this run of form, I think Fabio Vieira has got to become a starter, you know, playing with Martin Odegaard in this number 10 area. This ball is fantastic. The finish from Martinelli is, is also really, really good. And I think they need to look at the rule book. Because at the moment, it doesn't make sense. For me, that goal should have stood and Arsenal should have been 1-0 up after 18 minutes. Zinchenko, very important. Vieira in the team. But let's finish things off by talking about a real team goal. I love what Arsenal are doing with set pieces. Last week on the Clips channel, we spoke about how Arsenal overloaded the near post against United, leaving Declan Rice free on the back post. This was another routine. This came definitely from the training ground. So let's dive into a bit of set piece chat. Arsenal 
create an open play goal from a set piece routine. It is absolutely fantastic. For me, what this does is it disorganizes Everton's defensive structure. In open play, Everton are going to be rigid in a 4 5 1. You know, you can see Tarkovsky's going to be left centre back. You're going to see Braithwaite right centre back, Ashley Young right back, and Mikalenko at left back. But having this set piece routine, what we'll see in a minute is some disorganisation from Everton. It's arguably a second phase move. We can see the corners taken short, uh, Saka to Odegaard. From this position, Everton aren't too bad. The one concern you potentially say is a ball to the edge of the box. Fabio Vieira is in a lot of space. He's got ability from range, could also yeah, use his passing ability from that zone. As he's received defeat, you've got big problems for Everton. Someone has got to get out and close him down. That man, of course, is James Tarkovsky. We talk, speak about disorganisation because I think this really comes out in this goal. From this part, Arsenal are in a very relaxed position. You know, you've got a number of different options that Fabio Vieira's got. Of course, they utilise that right-hand side to create an overload. Vieira checks back inside, plays it to Zinchenko. At this position, we're starting to have a bit of problem for Everton. We can see the disorganisation. Of course, Tarkovsky's tracked uh, Fabio Vieira out, so he's no longer in the centre-back position. His centre-back partner, Branthwaite, is not even in shot. Calvert-Lewin and uh, Onana are currently in a centre-back position. Arsenal utilise this play so well. Little overload on the flanks. Ball goes out to Odegaard. Again, another crossing opportunity. We've still got William Saliba and Gabriel as decoys in the penalty area. But we've got a 3v2. And the big thing here is you've got... Adrissa Garner Gay and Dwight McNeil defending the situation, not natural defenders. The big thing with this little underlap from Saka pulls on Anna over. You, now you've got a problem where you've created space. The ball's gone uh, in behind the defence. The space has opened up for Trossard. There's no centre-backs anywhere near. Tarkovsky's nowhere near the ball to close down the shot. And Trossard scores with his weaker left foot. Trossard scored more goals on his weaker foot than any other midfielder in the Premier League since the start of last season. And this is a fantastic goal into the roof of the net. But it all comes from creating disorganisation in the Everton uh, back line with a lovely open play set that piece you love to see it. Great goal for Arsenal to give them the three points. So to conclude, Mikel Arteta has learned from last season. Zinchenko as a quarterback against low blocks. Runners in behind defences. Combination play on the right-hand side. Arsenal are absolutely cooking at the moment. When you combine that with them being the best team from set pieces since the start of last season, from a goal-scoring perspective, Arsenal have got a lot of strings in their bow and they're only getting better. This has been the Premier League review. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It. Make sure if you're new around here to smash that subscribe button. I've been Statman Dave. We'll see you later.